SwiftUI's list is a great way to show scrolling rows of data in your views. Sometimes though, you want scrolling columns of data. You want a whole grid of information that can adapt to make better advantage of different screen sizes. In SwiftUI, this is accomplished with two views. One is lazy hgrid for showing horizontal data, and one is lazy vgrid for showing vertical data. Just like lazy v and h stack, the lazy part means they will delay the creation of their content until it's actually needed. Let's actually scroll onto the view, which point it's made. This means you can create more complex layouts without chewing through vast amounts of system resources. Now making grids is done in two steps. First, you want to define the rows or the columns you want. It is all. You only define one of the two depending on the kind of grid you want. For example, if we have a uh, vertically scrolling grid, we might say we want our data laid out in three columns exactly 80 points wide each time. We can do that by adding the current, uh, adding to our content view. Let layout be an array of grid item with fixed, I'll say 80, and then 80, and then 80. So three columns, each fixed to 80 points wide. And once you have that layout, place your grid inside a scroll view, along with as many items you want to show inside there. Now each item you create inside the grid will automatically be assigned a column, just like the way uh, rows inside a list are automatically placed inside their parent. For example, we can make a thousand items inside our three column grid like this. Add a scroll view, then make a lazy V grid so it scrolls vertically, with the column layout being our layout. Inside here, place your views. So I'll say for each uh, zero to a thousand, do a text of item and then string interpolation dollar zero, like that. And that will now render a vertically scrolling grid of all our items. You can see here, it goes all the way down to 999 at the bottom. And you can see it's placing them automatically for us. We just say there are three columns and it'll do the rest for us. That will work great in some situations, but honestly, the best part of grids, I think, is their ability to work across a variety of screen sizes. This can be done with a different kind of grid item. Rather than saying fixed to 80 points, we can instead say, I want to have an adaptive layout. I could say adaptive with a minimum size, minimum size of 80 points. So at least 80 points across the board. And when we say that, we're saying make each one of our columns at least 80 points. But if you can, squeeze more columns in. So we're happy to add more columns as needed, as long as they're at least 80 points. And now you see I have item zero, one, two, and three, because I can fit four columns in here based on my content. But if I go to landscape mode, now I have zero to seven up here, I can fit more items in here. So it'll adapt to fit more uh, data, which is great. You can, if you want to, for even more control, provide both a minimum and a maximum. Like go as small as 80, but as big as 120, for example. And now you get a little bit more control over your layouts, depending on the exact thing you want to have. So now it'll adjust it here, so that more range is controlled. Now I tend to rely on these adaptive layouts the most because they allow grids to make maximum use of our available screen space. So here in iPhone 13 Pro, it's gonna be uh, four columns, if I'm working on a small device like the iPod Touch um, seventh generation, and that's a, literally a small device with a lower screen res, you can see it only has three columns. So it scales up or down really smoothly. Now before we're done, I wanna briefly show you how to make horizontal grids. The process is almost identical. Just make your scroll view go horizontally, then say a lazy H grid with rows rather than a lazy V grid with columns. For example, here I might say that a scroll view that goes horizontal and my lazy H grid with rows of my layout. And then I'll run it back. Oh, different simulator by accident, sorry. <laughs> I'll switch back to the uh, 13 Pro Simulator. Try that again, all being well. Now it's doing two things at once. I thought it was slow before, ain't seen nothing yet. There we go. Uh, I can now scroll horizontally like that, which you might want. 
That brings us to the end of the overview for this project. So please go ahead, undo all your changes, get back to the original project, ready to begin the real thing.